All right, so we're here with Ewan today, and we're going to chat about uh, keyword research. So Ewan, you're uh, a little bit of an expert with this stuff, eh? Uh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say an expert, uh, but I, I try. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, this is something I'm really passionate about, as people will probably find out. You know, I'm really um, kind of a – I look, use the analogy of digging for gold. Um, that's kind of what I like to do with, with keywords. Um, I get excited about that. Um, that's where I spend, like, 90% of my time is just – finding niches to enter. Um, and so I've looked at a fair amount of data over the years um, and I've kind of unearthed a few, I guess you would call them hacks, to get around some of the common, I say, uh, you know, the common pitfalls of, of keyword research the way it had tr has traditionally been taught. Um, so hopefully your audience can kind of um, get some get some tips and techniques that would kind of short, uh, short, short circuit the usual keyword process. Yeah, and uh, and you is definitely being modest there, but yeah, no. From uh, from a keyword research standpoint, you know, a lot of the stuff that we're applying now within within kind of my portfolio and some of the services business around content refine, you know, learn from you and and you know his his Q four earnings uh, reflect that. So he's got a, a monster of a portfolio that he's one hundred percent built, and uh, you know, pretty pretty impressive uh, performance. And I think uh, yeah, well, we'll, you know, what will be great here is, you know, the idea of this video is to help teach people uh, keyword research and, and you know, continue to learn from, from you and who's, you know, absolutely deep, deep, deep expert in this space. And then ideally it'll help people with, uh, if they're, you know, just watching this video or if they're, you know, participating in the, uh, the mortgage crushing challenge at, uh, at Authority Website Income, it'll be a, a definitely a good video. So the plan is, uh, you've got a bit of a presentation that we'll run through, we'll just chat about it. And, and then anybody that uh, that wants to learn more will have the will have the opportunity to definitely not, not have nothing for sale here so we'll just uh, yeah. jump jump into it and try and uh, help people out all right sounds good so I'm gonna go ahead and um, share my screen at this point let me just John, can you uh, see my screen? Yep, I can see it. Okay, cool. All right, so I'm gonna jump in. This is a, a you know relatively short presentation, but I think it's gonna get the key points across. Um, so just a little bit about you know first of all about my background. Um, you know, like John talked about, I built a portfolio. Uh, currently, actually, I have over over 25 sites that are kind of live in our portfolio. Um, you know, and, and basically, I built these sites from the ground up. So. You know, I've done a few acquisitions over the years, but this isn't this isn't been the primary driver of my revenue. It's really been building from the ground up from day zero, and I think that's what will probably resonate with your audience. You know, yeah. with the, the mortgage crushing challenge. Um, you know, one thing I'll say up front is that it's not easy. Um, it's simple if you can replicate the process, but it doesn't make it easy. There's a lot of um, kind of an emotional roller coaster to start, but I found that being a builder has just taught me so much about uh, you know about business and 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 really enabled me to get really good at a certain a certain skill set and um, you know I probably like a lot of people in your audience you know wanted to, want to do I, I escaped a cubicle a few years ago um, was working a, a day job um, from New Jersey so I uh, I used to commute to my my job was about 45 minutes on a good day but in New Jersey it's like uh, it can be like a two hour commute so. Um, sometimes I got stuck on the cement parking lot and, you know, I was out of, out of, out of college, you know, worked a few years doing that and quickly realized that just the cubicle wasn't quite for me. Um, and so I started working nights to try to, uh, you know, build this portfolio of skills, skills I'd picked up, you know, over the years in college a little bit for beer money, but I really started doubling down, um, you know, when I was faced with the, the prospect of 20 years in a, in a job or 40 years and, you know, not a whole lot to say for it, and looking around my office and seeing where people were 20 years from now, and is that somewhere I wanted to be? And sure, they were making a little bit more money, but you know, they, they didn't seem like they were particularly fulfilled. You know, they had, uh, you know, they had uh, to be in the office sometimes 50, 60 hours a week, and you know, that just didn't look too appetizing for me. And I was sick of building someone else's dream. <laughs> yeah. And so I wanted to kind of focus on my own. So that's a little bit about me. I won't get too into that. So one of the key kind of hallmarks of my, my uh, approach, and maybe that differs a little bit from uh, from from some of uh, what other people do, is, is zero off-page SEO. So I don't actively do any link building, uh, black hat, gray hat, 
even what people call white hat, I don't even do outreach really. So, you know, I do some social media distribution, but I'm not, let's say, emailing um, emailing bloggers in, in relevant niches and trying to get links or trying to do broken link building, any of that, even though those are very valid. Um, and the reason it, I don't do that is not for an, really an ethical reason. It's more that because I've honed in on keyword research and developed a really good process, I haven't had to worry about um, the, the off page. And um, it's not necessarily the right way to go, but it is a way. And especially for people facing a lot of information overload, it can be really helpful to hone in on some key foundational things. So you can see my core competencies, market research, including the keywords, because I think that's holistic. You know, it's not just about the keywords, it's also about thinking like long-term and demographically and trend-wise about the whole market as a whole. Um, also content design, content structure. And of course, affiliate monetization. I primarily leverage the Amazon Associates program. It's probably about 80% of our revenue. Um, so, and you know, I know that's a lot of uh, a very popular way to get started. So, I think you know, that's that's a, a definitely a, a good approach. And then um, scaling up. And this is a work in progress. Scale is, is difficult. You know, once you get to let's say three to five sites that you're personally responsible for, it becomes really important to kind of scale up and. Uh, try to find team members that can help you out with content publication, things like that. Yeah, no, I think that I think that's something that'll definitely resonate with a good chunk of the audience. Is exactly that that you know you, you, your what you're doing is you know executing the sort of the, the base core pieces exceptionally well, and then driving ridiculous results off the off the back of that. Where it's not some you know complicated, crazy secret process that you know. I mean, beyond the yeah. weird research that you're about to talk about, but, but yeah. you know, it's not some you know secret process, some secret no. source for backlinks that's you know driving your results. It's you know that basic core, great keyword yeah. research, great sites, great content, and, and results follow if you if you stick with it for long enough, consistently enough. Totally, and it's all about the execution, and yeah. it's something I constantly preach is just ex execute the simple things over and over again, and don't get don't get distracted by the the shiny objects. Um, so I'll just move on to the. A little primer here on high intent keywords. Some of you may have seen this in different places. This isn't like a, an exhaustive list of every single uh, keyword set that's attractive, but these are some of the more uh, interesting ones that I've seen. So for buying keywords, particularly for like Amazon sites when you're trying to make product recommendations, these are some of the better keywords. So, you know, best X, XYZ, so, you know, like best running shoes, best, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, best uh, CrossFit uh training uh, shoes, whatever it is, uh, that's one of the good keywords. Obviously, a lot of people build uh, whole sites just around best keywords, you know, top 10 ty uh, type of sites. And then kind of related to this is best X for Y. So let's say like best, uh, um, let's say best laptops for uh, for gaming or something like that. Um, and then uh, the brand name product model review. So it would be like, um, let's say uh, something out of, like a running shoe example, which we're going to get into, is, would be like ASICs review, or and then uh, you know whatever insert the model name in between. So that's another standard a whole a segment of the market just reviews products. Um, so there's all these review sites out there, and sometimes they combine uh, different approaches here. Um, X X versus Y. This is um, just comparisons. I, I find actually to be very uh, uh, tend tend to be a lower competition. So like the iPad versus yeah. Kindle type thing. Um, and then alternatives to X, this is another one that people sometimes miss, um, but it can be a very popular one. So like uh, like Dropbox alternatives or uh, you know something something very popular and then just plug in alternative to the end of it or alternatives to um, types tends to be a good keyword set. And then uh, under X amount of dollars, so that's another modifier because when someone's searching for something like less than $200 or less than $400, they've, they've kind of indicated that they're further along in the, in the process of buying. And that's really what, what I mean by high intent keywords. Um, they're keywords that demonstrate just by someone searching them in the search bar that they're close to getting ready to make a purchase. Uh, so what I call further down the funnel uh, versus higher up in the funnel. Um, you know, if they're just searching for uh, you know, like red shoes or something. <laughs> like you don't really know <laughs> what exactly they're in the mood for. Are they just kind of window shopping at this point? Are they really in a purchasing decision point? And this is where these buying keywords come into play. Yeah. Um, yeah. And will you go after both, or will you do you stick at do you do a blend between buying and info, or or stick? Yeah. So on the right, 
Yeah, the info keywords. This is more, I tend to think uh, of these as, in general, um, there might be more AdSense-focused keywords. Yep. Um, so, you know, just more informational. Think about, like, uh, you know, keywords around. This is the whole segment of sites around um, career training and things like that, like specific for, like, nurses and uh, lawyers and things like that, um, and salary. You know, uh, they're maybe not, I wouldn't call them as high intent or, or low down in the funnel, but they are still, uh, they're still solving a problem. That's kind of the common commonality between all these. So if you're going the AdSense route, the info keywords are probably going to be what you're looking at. There are combinations, um, you know, like for example, if you're doing like a, a rock climbing niche site, like how to, I don't know, how to climb a wall or something, like yeah. there might be things you could do around that. And then, but really the monetization is the best rock climbing shoes or something like that. Okay, um, got it. But so you, you try and yeah. stick around the focusing on the, for, for what you do in terms of the Amazon monetization that comes in a monetization question, but you try and stick with the, with the buying as a good core group of yeah, the I start with that. Yeah. yeah, I start with the buying keywords mainly because it's the, the passive path of least resistance. If you find low competition buying keywords, those are like uh, exponentially more valuable than you know going after maybe some more higher you know higher up the funnel or info keywords. So sure. ultimately, if you're building an authority site, you want to uh, uh, solve the problems of the niche holistically. They want to solve all their problems. Information keywords kind of feed in. Maybe they are kind of the pre-sales for the buying keywords or something like that. Or they help you build authority. Or they help you. They can be link bait. Um, but in general, like the buying keywords are where you're going to make your money. So I like to start there and see how far that gets me yeah. just by focusing on those keywords. And then we can start in, uh, uh, introducing some of these other keywords. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, so. Um, here, you know, this is kind of like my th my thesis here is what's wrong with keyword research as it exists now. And there's a lot of really good resources out there that, that people look at. Um, but the problem that I saw in this space was is this old model of you plug a keyword into a, a keyword tool, and then you click search, and it kind of like it's like a magic eight ball. You shake it, and like <laughs> you get back this mass amount of data, and it's kind of related to the initial term, but it's all over the place. You might have review keywords, you might have comparison keywords, uh, but it's not really focused. It's kind of all over the place. Um, you know, you might be in niches that are one or two times removed from where you're, where you're looking. Um, so really, there's just too much noise. Uh, you get analysis paralysis, so especially when you're just starting off, if you get this like mountain of data that isn't really filtered and isn't really focused, you can get stuck. Um, and you can feel like this is a time-consuming process. This is why a lot of people hate keyword research, is because it's this like, it seems like this like Herculean task of thinking of brainstorming and then sifting through data and not really knowing is this a good keyword or is that a good keyword or you know is this an e-commerce keyword or you know is this an is this, is this something that I can monetize or you know what what is going on? So there's a lot of uh, I guess information out there and it's hard to sift through. It's time-consuming. Um, you know, like <laughs> I use the analogy again of digging for gold. It's kind of like needle in the haystack approach. It's yeah. just a lot harder. Um, and then you have comparative ignorance. So if you can't sift through a lot of data quickly, um, it's hard to compare niches. So a lot of times, as a when I was just starting off, I would find a niche and it would look good in isolation. Um, you know, I'd look at some of the lower competition keywords relative to that search query that I, I put in. Um, but you know, how, what, who am I to say that it's good it's the best uh, uh, niche to go after and that's another I think another stumbling block for people starting off is they get stuck in well is this a good niche or is this not a good niche but if you're stuck in this old model of all this keyword research and not a lot, whole lot of actionable data you get stuck yeah. and you can't compare niches very easily so for me personally you know I have a whole folder of you know hundreds of niches that are you know <laughs> ready to go <laughs> eventually because I I've, I've, this is what I do I look at the data and I have more than enough. I have niches for miles, as I tell people. But you know, it becomes a, it becomes that uh, you can select the best opportunities first, and that's really valuable yep. because so much of this site building thing is about investing your time. And if you go six months down the road in a in a, let's say a mediocre niche, I mean, yeah, you might get some progress, and it's probably better than nothing. But you know, it would still be much better to go after a niche that you know is really it represents a good opportunity. Makes sense. All right, so just going on. So uh, this is an example um, that I put in. Um, oh, this is using SE Cockpit. We'll get into that uh, in, in a little bit. But this is kind of the old way of the seed keyword. So I put in best running shoes. 
And you know, this is just some of the top results that you get. Um, you get <laughs> like shoes, okay, um, running, okay. You know, uh, there's some interesting stuff. You can see like you know best running shoes, but you know because that's fairly competitive. And just a, a primer, so this orange bar here is the uh, competition level. Um, so that's really the main thing you're looking at in addition to the monthly searches here. Um, running shoes for women. Okay, there's some interesting, I'd say the best keywords here might be best running shoes for women. Um, you know, obviously running shoes for men is, is good too. Th those are probably the most interesting, but even those are fairly competitive. Yep. Um, but if you just looked at this, you'd say, oh, yeah, I can just target these keywords. These look the, the best keywords to go after. Um, but my whole thing is you probably miss a lot of other keywords. And then you get, see so down here, you get like best walking shoes. Like, okay, that's an interesting result, but that might cause me as a, as a beginner to go off down the wrong trail. I'll get distracted by that. You know, when I'm really just looking for running shoes, I want to know what are the sh sh terms around running shoes. I don't want to know necessarily about walking shoes, even if that might be, you know, an interesting niche to go after. There's just a lot of noise in this, in this search. Yep. Um, so, like I said, uh, I target the exact buying terms exclusively. So when I, if I can filter out all that noise, that would be ideal. So it's basically within SE Cockpit, uh, I think it's the, the pro version, you can get Google Suggest versus the AdWords synonyms. Um, and I use, yeah, like I said, SE Cockpit by Swiss Made Marketing. Um, and I use there's these modifiers within the tool. Um, they're at, you can append, you can prepend, and you can add in between words. Um, so prepend, like it sounds, putting uh, basically returning all the results before a certain set of words, and uh, app end is afterwards, and then obviously add between words is the, the words between two phrases that you enter. Um, so here's an example of best running would be the root phrase, and then I'd click uh, app end and add in between words uh, to get all the variations of anything in between best and running, and then anything that comes after uh, best running. Uh, and then so here, here's an example of you know what you get when you start doing that again and this i mean yeah. this is where i think when i was first sort of you know you're first kind of walking me through this process that, that you were using this is where it kind of was like holy crap like you can go like this this is the screen that that blows me away the most in terms of the, the this tool relative to, to others in terms of the ability to go after sort of a specific term but then mm -hmm. do deep research onto the, in terms of the suggestions around it whereas you know you, sometimes you work, would combine like a like a like a suggest tool or like a um, and then this this really kind of gives you a lot so, so sorry to interrupt but yeah no this is yeah. this is this is an exciting screen yeah no I, I get excited every time I look at this too it's like a light bulb moment for me yeah. um, and again it's it's so it's not just about putting some keyword terms in and shaking the magic eight ball it's, you had to take some outside thought and think about your niche a little bit more holistically. What are the terms people are using? For me, I, I, I saw, okay, some of the good keywords around best running, so what if I just threw that in as a modifier and then I did this app end and add in between? And you can see some of these results. I mean, virtually all of these results, if we just go back, like this is the first one, yeah, and then you compare it to this, yeah. like virtually all of these are, are better to go target, like if you targeted any of these. Yeah. Uh, because they're all, as you can see, they're all best, you know? And those are, anyone will tell you that's been in this space is that those are the best keywords to go after. So, you know, you can see probably, you know, there's a whole bunch of best running shoes for men and women. We saw those before. Uh, but then if you go down, you can start seeing some really, like, best cushioned running shoes, best stability running shoes, best neutral running shoes. And these are things that, unless I had some really, like, deep insight into the market, I wouldn't have been able to think yeah. about. You know, I, this is not something I would have just, yeah, sure, best running shoes I can think of. But I, again, it, so these are basically... In the old system, these are virtually inaccessible. Yeah. I mean, unless you really try to like do a bunch of searches. Um, and you know, best mil minimalist. I don't even know what minimalist running shoes are. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's a maybe the, the, the five fingered, the five yeah, I guess. Ones, yeah. <laughs> uh, best uh, long distance running shoes, running shoes for wide feet, for shin splints, for bad yeah. knees, uh, like supination. Like these are great, and and anyone will tell you that like looking at volumes, like these are really good volumes too. Yeah. I would actually, if these were 500, I'd be interested, you know, even 400 per month. Um, but at 1,000, like, in the old days, you could build a whole site, like, an exact match domain on just one of these and make decent money. So, and, I mean, that's an know. interesting point that you bring up, because I think that's the source of a lot of the kind of traditional kind of keyword research strategies. Is it's around identifying that one single site that you're going to find your domain, exact match domain around. And, I mean, even this tool still has the, like... There's a dot com dot net available for that exact match, yeah. <laughs> and so like, like there's there's still a hangover in that in, in this world of 
of you know not do, doing individual keyword research versus market niche research, which which this definitely does more much more of that. Yeah, you've just yeah. gone and gotten you know potentially 20, 20 great titles now to go to go after. Yeah. And that's an excellent point, John. Just want to like kind of double tap that. I mean, this is huge. I think we've moved on as an industry. A lot of people talk about building sites. Authority sites are the way to go. We know that. Um, but again, like you said, the keyword tools haven't caught up. They were built in an age of exact match domain, and they haven't really adapted for whatever reason. And you know, I don't know if this was intentional by design. Um, you know, I don't think they necessarily had the site uh, authority site owner in mind. This is, in effect, you know, I think the default if you're trying to do authority site research at scale. Yeah. Like, this is the way you have to look at it. Um, because you're not just looking at an individual term. You're looking at the basket, the total basket um, of keywords. Um, so, yeah, so so just to highlight, here's some of the good keywords we saw, right? Um, and this is, I mean, you talk about long tail. Anytime you have more than three or four uh, words, you know, and it just gets exponentially easier in general to rank for and you can see there's some of these you know five you know five uh, five words in in the phrase which is excellent and again healthy volume i mean collectively you add up this volume and that's more than enough indication for me that this is a good niche to go after um and yeah so advantages uh faster i didn't do a live example but if i were it takes about a minute for these searches to complete you know um versus some tools that you know do take a lot longer or you have to manually you know get the result yeah uh so that's an advantage. It's a cloud-based system. Um, you can get a high-level overview of the of the niche's best keywords. This is what we were talking about. You can kind of get it once over the world, and be like, "Is this a good niche to enter or not?" Versus if we did a different search, it might be a lot more competitive. Um, so you know, that's just something to keep in mind. No distractions. Again, none of these like walking shoes. I wasn't searching for walking shoes. You know, you're, or you're not getting uh, random e-commerce keywords thrown in there. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Um, almost instant niche validation. Obviously, it takes some. Uh, some, you have to get used to the, the system, but you can really quickly, I get to the point now where I can take one look at it, and because I've done this enough, I can be like, okay, good or bad, yes or no, <laughs> take notes or not. Um, and then yeah, that's so valuable. Is It's not so much taking advantage of the right opportunities, it's learning to ignore the ones that are not worth going after. And I, I feel like so many people get stuck on that phase for whatever reason of just mediocre niches or not great niches, but you know, they want to get started. You know, again, I think this will just make your life a lot easier. And then for me, I build these little wireframes. Basically, it's just paper napkin. This is what the site is going to look like. Here are the content silos. Uh, you know, for like running shoes, it might be different brands or different uh, type of running, like trail running versus road running or something like that. But you can kind of build out uh, a site in, in hours and get started. So it's not the research phase it doesn't have to be weeks. It can like you can get it done this weekend type of thing, yeah. um, maybe maybe in a day, <laughs> yeah. uh, and that I think is a huge barrier to getting started. So, um, yeah. no, absolutely, the validation piece is, is fantastic with this tool, is uh, for sure. I mean, with keyword research, I mean that uh, in terms of like the the you know the, the building a site at, at this stage of the early keyword research, that's it. I mean, you know, you've gotten a bit of an idea, and then you plug it in here, and then you can get to see the data that validates that yes, there's a there's both demand and and monetization opportunity. Yeah, exactly. And, and and then here's another example with uh, just I did. Um, this is another way that I search. So you just do the brand name. So Asics is a brand of running shoe, and then the term review, yeah. and then I, I click the add in between words. Um, so basically, what that does is it returns all the variations in between Asics and review, which is genius in a way because again, you're filtering out exactly what you, all the noise, and you're filtering to yeah. exactly the specifications that you want. And you could just do this across running shoes, Nike, Adidas. Yeah. You know, and then you can you can start like the light bulb should be going off. Like, you know, you can start building out exponential. You know, like in terms of the keywords. Yep. Again, individually, like for review term, uh, five ninety searches per month is pretty good for for a specific review term. You know, some of these other ones. Look at all these variations you have yep. here. I mean, again, these are just articles waiting to be written. Okay. Obviously, you get down to lower volume, but for review keywords, since they're lower down in the funnel, very close to a purchasing decision. A lot of times it makes sense to even go after these, yep. um, as anyone will tell you. You know, sometimes the money's in the long tail, yep. um, but it, this is great validation that, you know, again the competition level is fairly low for all of these, um, and you can just kind of prioritize lowest competition to highest. You know, for example, I might even do a review on Asics Gel Equation Seven as my first article, just because it's super low competition, yep. and I can kind of back my way into that niche from the easiest entry point versus 
best running shoes for women. Yeah. <laughs> like that might be pretty hard just to launch. You probably will never get to the top just by doing that. Okay. You know, eventually you target that, but start with something that actually has a reasonable chance of ranking on the first page because yeah. that's where the money's at. Yep, yeah. absolutely. And then, uh, so I, I just to kind of validate this, I took another survival gear is like a huge, uh, a huge niche as well. Um, that people go after. This is the old uh, keyword approach. Again, if I were to get in the survival uh, geared space, again, a lot of like bug out bag, camping gear, uh, emergency food. I mean, again, all pretty competitive. Yeah. And you know, there's some interesting things, but even then, like emergency food supply, it's not really. I mean, it might be a good informational keyword, but it's not really. It's not clear buying intent. Uh, and then you kind of go down, and yeah, it's just not. Too appetizing. I mean, it gives you some general inclination, but not a whole lot of actionable uh, content. Oops, I think I. Okay, here we go. So then, I, if I do, uh, here's an example of uh, if I do the app end and add between words. Again, this is a really competitive niche, which is why I picked it. Um, but then you can kind of see. I mean, obviously, survival knife. There was a very famous case study around that, um, right. and you know, it's fairly competitive now because it's been out there. But yeah. there's you, you start down here: survival uh, food, survival books. Uh, survival kit, survival gear, um, survival hatchet, survival axe, survival weapons, um, survival fire starter, best folding survival knife. <laughs> you know, like these, these are interesting. And yeah. this is, again, a fairly competitive niche. But again, you filter it out. You kind of got, now you get a high level view of, okay, th- these are like the buying keywords in the survival space. And sure, there are maybe other variations you could you could look at um, in terms of the seed keywords. But this is a good good early indication of you know whether it's interesting to go after. So if it were just me, I, I would probably look at running shoes. You know, if if I had a choice yep. before this, but this is still a good example. If you were going to target survival niche, you know, but this it, is a good. And I think it also shows that even even if you are going after those sort of widely talked about from you know a couple a couple sources sort of niches that we know that, that have been oversupplied in terms of uh, content people coming yeah. to the site now. <laughs> that you know, I think I think even with that, it's still this is a way to slice that data up to be able to identify exactly. those opportunities. And you know, you're not picking, you're not picking easy to go after uh, niches here. These, this is showing that there's opportunities still yeah. within even the most yeah. overdone niches. I, yeah, and that's a good point too, because a lot of people talk about passion versus profit. Like, what do you go after? And let's say you've come down fairly on the side of, I want to pursue, I want to create a lifestyle business around something I'm really passionate about. And if you're, let's say, running running doesn't interest you, so you're like, well, why, I, would, why wouldn't target that niche? Okay, well, maybe survival is what you're interested in. Even so, like, if you're going to pick survival, these, this is where you can start. And that's where it's, like, spot on. Like, even in the most competitive niches, you know, this process works. Yeah. Um, I've done, you know, I think I have another example in here with a particular competitive niche, but um, not to get too off track, just here's some keywords to target that I looked at. Um just a summary, these are the good ones. Survival books, uh, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll touch on that later. I think I have an example. But um, I'm going to go into, here's here's another competition, uh, high competition niche, typically. Yeah. It's the fat loss, the yeah. fat loss niche. Everyone tells you, you know, the, don't, you do know it. don't do it. Yeah. It's, it's so competitive. But people also say, well, the money is in it. So it's kind of tricky to, well, how do, how do you get uh, entry point to this market. Well, here you go. <laughs> how do you um, get rid of armpit fat? They yeah, like, an extremely low competition. Yeah, yeah, and you just go through this like thigh fat, neck fat. How to, again, solving specific problems: underarm, how to get rid of stubborn belly fat. Like, who would have thought? Like, that was a search term. Yeah, that gets a thousand searches per month and it's low competition. Yeah. Um, so no, that's great. Yeah, in, in terms of time, I know we're kind of wrapping up. It's coming close yeah. to thirty minutes here. So I guess, you know, what uh, we can keep keep going through, but yeah, let's try and keep it. Uh, to yeah, yeah, I'll for keep the it. Audience. So here's an example I picked out: how to get rid of knee fat. This is like, look how low that competition is. Virtually, like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy. So what I did is I said, okay, let's go look at uh, Google search results, and then uh, you can see. Um, the number one result is nefat.com. <laughs> so and the main authority is 15, which is 
pretty low. Yeah. Um, and if you went to check out the site, you'd see that it's you know it, it, the barrier to entry is fairly low <laughs> yeah. to rent this, and they're you know they're monetizing. So again, perfect example. And I like to do this to kind of validate that the keyword tool actually works, and it's not just spitting like spitting me back I, results that have no uh, connection. Yeah, and I, I would I would say the one thing in the competition side is that it, I feel like it undervalues the domain authority. So that and like you still need to validate that there are sites that are com- that are similar to the site that you're trying to rank with. The, the, that your site that you have that are similar to showing up on, on page one exactly the way that you're doing it. I think that gets underestimated in the uh, totally. LC cockpit uh, algorithm. Yeah, totally. Uh, we also use a, another example, the paleo dad. I'll just kind of go through it quickly, but again, the old approach, the new approach, again, a paleo diet, best paleo cookbook is one example I pulled out. Yep. I guess 13 inches per month. Um, again, we look at this. Um, number three result, a de- domain authority yeah. of one. <laughs> the 10 best paleo cookbooks for 26 this was yeah. done a few months ago so it could have changed a little bit but still domain authority of one like how much more indication do you need that you can compete in this market yeah. so um, yeah and then a bonus tip is once you find these sites like for example this was paleomint.com you, you can you can reverse engineer the keywords and there's many people that teach how to do that too but basically put it into a tool like SEMrush or or whatever H or Fs or whatever whatever tool you use, and you can kind of find the keywords they're already ranking for. Because if you find a low de- domain authority site that's ranking highly for a lot of low competition keywords, uh, they it, it tends to be if there's if it's smoke there's a fire type of thing. And if just basically find out what else they're ranking for if they're a low domain authority site, um, and then you can kind of just take those keywords as well. So awesome. um, yeah, that's it. So. Yeah. Um, I hope that makes sense, and uh, you know it was helpful. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was, it was extremely helpful. You know, both the first time that I went through it, and then you know subsequent questions that I've that I've followed up and asked asked for yourself. So, uh, you know, I we'll we'll have this on the on the, the web my website authoritywebsiteincome dot com, and then if anyone wants to get in touch with uh, with Ewan, they can uh, contact him at uh, authoritysherpa dot com, and then yep. uh, sign up to his uh, list at Welcome uh, Authority Website Income. And, yep. and uh, we'll we'll uh, have this on the post at Throw Ropes of Income. And if people want to have questions, I'm sure you and can uh, jump over and, and ask. And if there's, you know, a crazy amount of demand for more of questions of you and time, which, you know, there certainly could be, we'll, uh, we'll yeah. figure out how to get you back on for, for a webinar or something. So Yeah, and if you really hate this, just tell me to get lost. And I will <laughs> Yeah, no, right on. You and really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure. I mean, we uh, we started out intending to have like a thirty minute, and we're at like hour and a half. So uh, of our there we go. shooting the shooting the shit and uh, and doing the video. So yeah, always always a pleasure. And yeah, I'm sure that uh, my audience will get a ton of value out of kind of you know your awesome. your deep expertise in this space. So so thank you very much. Well, thanks thanks for having me, John. I look forward to uh, continuing the conversation with your with your audience.